So I'm going to give you a formal definition for the factorial, but first let me just give you a colloquial one with an example. If you take any whole number, like say 5, and you say 5 factorial, well you actually already saw 5 factorial on the board, it was 120. Where that 120 comes from is we say, well 5 factorial is 5 times, do you remember I multiplied all those previous numbers along the bottom here, right? So it's going to be times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Do you see it? Uh, and a quick sort of look at the numbers will confirm, it was 120, right? Well there's 20, there's 6, 6 20s are 120, okay? So can we formalize this a little bit, generalize it? If this is 5 factorial, what is any number n with a factorial? Hmm. Any takers? How am I going to start this thing off? Yeah, what do you reckon, Peter? Is it like, you take the first number and n minus 1. Okay, let's just pause there. So, I think it's a great thing to start, I mean, I'm just trying to recognize the pattern here, right? 5 factorial starts with 5. So therefore, I think it's reasonable to conclude that n factorial starts with n. And then you have to climb down all the way until you get to 1. Yes? So therefore, the next number, the next number less than n is going to be n minus 1. And then the one after that will be n minus 2. And I'm going to stop there. Why do you think I stopped there? Because I've got 1, 2, 3 terms, and 3 terms is all you need to establish a pattern. You with me? So I'm going to stop there, but uh, I've got to keep going all the way, dot, 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 until I reach the end, which is going to be 1. Do you agree with that? So this is going to be times 3, times 2, times 1. And that's it. Okay. So this is our definition for n factorial. It's n times all of the numbers underneath it, uh, all the whole numbers, I should say. And then you just find out what that product is. Yeah, question. What if n is 3, then? This is the definition. Yeah, so this definition works if you think about well, where is the n number going to start. And if I say n is 3, then I'll go 3 times 2 times 1, and then I've already reached the end. So this doesn't tell you, hey, this is something you want to add on to here. This just tells you where the finish is. If this happens to be these three terms, well, that's still the finish. So if n equals 3 or n equals 2, um, you'd be starting at 2, and then 1, and then, oh, look, you're already at the end. So you don't need to go any further. Okay? So it is a bit of a weird generalized thing that I've written it. It's already got six terms in it. But depending on what n is, it may have less. It's just generalized. Okay, good. Now, I need to show you a few ways to simplify this and then to notice some patterns, okay? Um, so the first thing you're going to see quite a lot of, as an example, is you're going to see factorials interacting with each other. Um, you'll see them a lot in fractions and you'll want to understand how to cancel them. So as an example, think about something numerical and simple like that. Now, of course, we could work out what 7 factorial is. By the way, uh, if you haven't already, get your calculator out. Uh, and if you hadn't noticed it before, for the last however many years you've owned this calculator, tucked over there in the top right-hand corner is the factorial button. You'll see it there. Mine looks like this. Okay. You see it there? Right? So just quickly check it by p typing in 5 and then the factorial button and it should hand you back 120. Yes? Thumbs up? It's calculating? Yes? Okay. And here's one thing I could do. I already know what 5 factorial is. So I could work out what 7 factorial is and then I could just divide those two numbers. I could do that and that would give me an answer. I happen to know that the answer is going to be 42. But I don't even know what 7 factorial is. So how do I work out? It was 42. What do you reckon, boys? Because you can cancel out all the, like, 5 times 4 times 3, and then you get 7 times 5 times 6. Perfect. And okay, so rewind a little bit. We define 5 factorial in the way that Morgan described. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, that 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is also tucked away in this term, isn't it? Right? Let's write some working that helps us understand that. 7 factorial, by definition, is 7 times 6 times... Now, before I write the next bit, what I'm thinking is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that's what I had in my mind. But I don't need to write that, because I have notation for that. It's 5 factorial. Do you agree? Does that make sense? This is just a shortcut for us. 
Are you getting the sense? Mathematicians love a good shortcut. So that's what 7 factorial is. I've just sort of pulled this bit out so that I can identify the common factor nice and easily. And as Morgan suggested, this 5 factorial and this 5 factorial are gone, which leaves me with 7 times 6, which of course is just 42. Okay, cool. All right, however, Sometimes you don't get nice, neat numbers. Sometimes you get algebra. And algebra, we know, is a little more abstract, harder to deal with. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples I'd love you to just tinker with on your own before I show you how they work. Okay? So what I'm going to ask you to do to each of the fractions I'm about to give you is, can you simplify them as far down as you can? Okay? Don't worry about expanding things out if they're factorised, leave them factorised, but how far can you simplify? Okay? Have a go, please. What do you got for this first one? Um, Example three. Anyone want to be brave enough to offer a suggestion? Anyone? Yeah, Jeff, what do you think? Uh, would it be this um, bracket n plus three, bracket n plus two, bracket n plus one? Bracket n plus one. Full stop? What do you guys think? Yeah. Happy? I agree, because think about this, and I will just continue the working. The, the numerator there, n plus 3, all factorial, starts with n plus 3, and then it climbs down and climbs down. It should actually keep going all the way through n down to 1. But of course, on the denominator, you've already got an n factorial, so that's why it cancels, leaving you with the three terms Jake already mentioned. Okay, what about this one? What do you get left with here? Any suggestions? Hmm. Can you tell me what I could... Um, what I could write to help me start to work out the answer. Okay, if I say n plus 1, that's where the n plus 1 factorial starts, and then I say the next term is n, what's the term after n? It's n minus 1, right? And then I have all of the terms after that as well, but I don't need to write any of them, because on the denominator, that's what I have factorial. So I'll just stop there. And all of that is on n minus 1 factorial. So therefore, these two guys cancel, which is why, as Paul suggested, we just end up with those first two terms. Okay? And just colloquially, what this is sometimes called, and I know your textbook refers to it as this, this is sometimes referred to as unrolling a factorial. Because a factorial sort of symbol like that is kind of like this curled up, all of these sort of different terms uh, all together, right? And sometimes you want to actually just, which, can you just pull out the first bit that's easily accessible? Just kind of like unwind that bit, the 7 and the 6, and leave the 5 and the 4 and the 3 and the 2 and the 1, leave them all sort of balled up together in there, because I can just cancel those, okay? So sometimes you'll hear that phrase, and that's all they're referring to, just sort of expanding out like that, okay? Okay, now I have one more thing that's interesting to show you before I get you started on some exercises, okay? Um, this definition that we've developed here works the whole numbers, everything is fine. But my question to you is, and it's actually not just a matter of curiosity, it will actually become critically important for us in period three. My question for us is, this tells us what 5 factorial and 4 and 3 and 2 and 1 factorial is. But it doesn't tell us what this is. Because as um, Chan sort of pointed out when we had a look, this definition is okay, but it assumes you end with 1, right? Well, what does this mean? You can't end at 1 if you start after 1, right? Like, wait, this definition says you start with whatever that number is, so I guess I'd say 0 times and then I get confused, okay? <laughs> so my question for you is, how am I going to, and this is the important question, not what the answer is, the actual answer is very simple, but the question is how am I going to work out what the answer should be? B. Now, can you just raise your hand? Who actually knows what the answer is? Okay, all right. Now, keep your hand up. Do you think you have a way of explaining why it is that? Okay, don't look it up. All right, let me show you. Okay. Um, let me explain in a really simple way. If you go back to your numbers that you wrote in your table, I'm just going to write them down again. Uh, I think it was what? 1, 2, 6, 24, 120. Yes? Can you just quickly label for me? what these are, which is 1 factorial, 2 factorial, etc. This is 1 factorial, 2 factorial. Okay. Now, the nature of the factorial function kind of begs for you to go to the next one, then go to the next one, 720, uh, 5040, whatever the next one is. 
But if you go backwards, that's how you're going to get to zero, right? Like, I don't want to go forwards, I want to climb back down this way. Okay, well, going from left to right, you multiply. Multiply by 2, then multiply by 3, then multiply by 4. Well, if going that way means multiplication, what does going this way mean? Division, right? You agree with that? Well, just think about how you go from one term to the previous term, okay? How do you go from 5 factorial to 4 factorial? You divide by 5, which makes sense because 5 factorial divided by... It's a bad factorial. 5 factorial divided by 5, well, you do the unrolling thing. I just showed you. That's 5 times 4 factorial on 5. So the 5's cancel. That makes sense. You divide by 5, and that will get you back one step. Yes? Okay, what about to go from 4 factorial to 3 factorial? You divide by 4. And then you divide by 3. And then you divide by 2. And like all good mathematicians do, you follow the pattern, and to get to whatever the previous term was, you divide by 1. If I'm doing my numbers right, 1 divided by 1 is 1. And that's what 0 factorial is equal to. Okay? Now this is a weird idea, because you're like, why? It breaks my definition. Okay? No, it doesn't break the definition. It extends it to something that makes sense. And in fact, it has to be not a frowny face, but one. It actually has to be one for really important reasons that we'll discover in about two hours.